conspiracy. After diverting to a secret meeting with an old friend and some of Starfleet's finest commanders, Captain Picard finds the USS Horatio destroyed. This is an awesome episode. Yeah. And you can tell by the way they open it. My first note on conspiracy is, oh yeah. <laughs> I have zero gravity <laughs> sex joke. <laughs> Okay, that's not what I was referring to. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just read the episode as a whole. <laughs> Jordy's telling a zero gravity sex joke to Data. I don't even know why you would bother telling a joke at all to Data. We know by this point that these characters aren't as intelligent as they're supposed to be. But also, his joke doesn't sound like it would have made sense or it would have been funny. It seems like an inappropriate joke for the bridge of the Enterprise. Data's trying to laugh or do the mechanics of laughing, but I really like when he stops laughing. That moment made me laugh. <laughs> but then they cut back to stupid freaking Troy and Riker, their stupid little Star Trek smirks. Yeah, you know why they're smirking is because they did try that sex thing so they get a code 47, which is super secret message and it's captain's eyes only, so they have to wake him up, so he... Throws off his space blanket. It's all shiny and reflective underneath. So it's his buddy, who's another captain, and he says they gotta meet in person because he's gotta give him a warning, but he won't do it over subspace, even though it's a secure channel. So they divert their course, and Picard goes down by himself, and there's cool music, and there's cool red lights, which are used for the effect of the scene, but... It was cool anyway. It's a very different atmosphere from what you usually get from Star Trek, and it tells you right away that this is a horror episode. The whole episode plays out like its own horror movie. Michael Berryman is one of the captains, and he's known for being in a lot of horror movies himself, like The Hills Have Eyes or Devil's Rejects or Weird Science, and I think he was in The X-Files too. So there are three captains, and they all start questioning Picard to make sure that Picard is Picard, and he wants to know what the hell's going on. And they say there's been a lot of unusual orders and strange deaths that are attributed to accidents and irrational proposals and minimal communications from Starfleet. And they suspect that Starfleet has been compromised. And the only way to tell if someone isn't who they say they are is they have a lack of memory and they try and bluff their way through it. So Picard assigns Data to access all of Starfleet orders for the last six months to anybody to try and find some kind of pattern. While Data's doing that, the Enterprise encounters a weird disturbance, so they go check it out, and it turns out to be the Horatio, which was his friend's ship that he was just talking to, and it's been totally destroyed. Data's looking things up in the computer, and he's making comments out loud to himself, and there's a joke about Data doing human-type things and then having to explain it to a computer, and it's really stupid. Talking to myself. A human idiosyncrasy, triggered by a fascination with a particular set of facts, or sometimes brought about by senility, or used as a means of weighing information before reaching a conclusion, or as Thank a... Thank you, sir. I comprehend. There are little bursts of humor in this episode, which is odd, considering how dark the episode turns out to be. And maybe that's why they put them in there. I wish they weren't there. So Data has found shuffling of personnel in high levels of Starfleet, and the orders were given with a lot of subtlety, and they were done to control vital sections of territory, and it would be exactly what would be done as a precursor to invasion. So Picard knows it, Riker knows it, Data knows it. So they decide to go to Earth to get some answers, because that's where Starfleet headquarters is. Admiral Quinn is down there. In Coming of Age, he warned Picard of a threat, and he just wanted to make sure he could trust him. And Commander Remick is also down there. So they shut off communication, and Troy is extremely helpful when she says, Someone is hiding something, but I can't tell who or what. I mean, that's like meteorologists who say, It's gonna rain, but I can't tell you when or where. So Quinn goes up to the Enterprise, and Picard and Riker are gonna go down. But I thought it was odd. Picard suspects something, definitely. He tells Quinn, Riker's gonna take you to your room, and Quinn says, okay, and then he walks, but then Picard holds Riker back. But instead of holding him back for a couple seconds, he takes him to an entirely different room. So Quinn's walking all by himself. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. And that's not even the worst part. Picard is talking to Riker and he's saying, that is not Admiral Quinn. I know Admiral Quinn. That's not him. Something really suspicious is going on here. Keep your eyes open. Then he gets on the transporter. He says to the crewman who's operating the transporter, energize, which means that crewman was in the room for that whole conversation about Starfleet being compromised and be on red alert and don't tell anybody. <laughs> I hadn't thought about any of that stuff. I think I was anticipating the stuff coming up a little too much. And then there's those 1980s horror movie tropes in this one, in lines of dialogue, where Picard says, My first officer will be joining us shortly. Yes, I'm sure he will. 
So then we get to one of the better parts of this episode where Riker says to Quinn, what's in the case? And he says it's a superior form of life. And then Quinn grabs him and there's this fight scene. <laughs> there are times when it cuts to kind of a more distant shot and it's clearly not the two same actors that are fighting each other. We get to see Riker demonstrate his incredible fighting ability with doing these weird kicks that go up at a crazy steep angle that I don't think a human could possibly pull off. It looks really weird. I can't believe they stuck it in the episode like that. Didn't say, like, let's just have him punching the guy. Instead, let's have a weird Muppet foot come up from below frame <laughs> and just kind of stick up. I really like Quinn's acting here. His reactions to everything is awesome. And I really like the double for Riker and how angry he looks when he's fighting Quinn. Back in TV broadcast quality for the year this aired, you wouldn't be able to tell from those far shots, but now that everything's all HD, they look nothing like the actors. So then Worf and Jordy come in, and they find Riker on the floor, and Quinn says, oh my gosh, he just passed out, or whatever. And he says, I gotta go. <laughs> so then he just starts to leave, and Jordy says, don't you think we should wait till the doctor gets here? And then he chucks Jordy through the freaking doors. It keeps making less and less sense as it goes on, because there's no reason for him to attack Riker in the first place. And then here he's just bringing everything right out into the open. How does he think he's going to possibly succeed in his mission if everybody is against him now? If he just didn't talk about it to Riker in the first place, none of this would have happened. When Riker said, what's in the case? He could have just said, my lunch? <laughs> so then Jordy's out of action. So then he looks at Worf and says, it's just you and me. And then Worf gets his ass beat. And like you said, it's all out in the public, so Beverly's just in the doorway and just shoots him. <laughs> Yeah, there's no other possible way that that could end. And Quinn even gives them all enough time to signal other people that help is needed. You know, he doesn't rip off their communicator. He's just kind of standing there laughing while Riker says, I need help in this room right now. And then there was a very odd line where Beverly says to Jordy, are you all right? And he says, if I could see, I'd be seeing stars. It was an odd placement of that line. So then Beverly does an exam on Quinn, and there's this big-ass moving thorn sticking out of the back of his neck. It's not even below his collar. People have been walking behind him all day, and no one said, hey, there's a giant purple moving thorn sticking out of the back of your neck. Did you know that? <laughs> Beverly says she can't remove it without killing him, and she tells Picard what's going on. And then we get a straight horror movie moment. So Picard's down on Earth, and they say, hey, let's eat. And Picard's little dish, he takes off the lid, and it's full of mealworms, which was cool. And they're all laughing and doing their, I'm the bad guy in the horror movie. Yeah, why do they need to let him know what's going on? Why don't they knock him out and put a bug in him without telling him everything first? So then Picard says, I'm out of here. And the door opens, and Riker's there. And it turns out, oh, man, Riker's one of them, too, because he's got the thorn sticking out of the back of his neck. But it doesn't look anything like Quinn's. It's not moving. It's not the same size. It's not the same color. It looks completely fake. Well, I mean, they had to make do with whatever they had in sick bay or whatever. And then the Vulcan Admiral says, We didn't go after you. We allowed you to come after us. And then the one guy says, More dramatic that way, don't you think? It's like, yeah. <laughs> From their perspective, that shouldn't be a good thing. I like how stupid they all look when they're eating the worms, you know, spilling them out everywhere, just eating them with their hands and shoving them into their mouth awkwardly and stuff. Use a spoon at least. So then it turns out Riker was just pretending and they all start shooting. The female captain that's next to Picard, he kind of knocks her arm aside when she's going to try to shoot at Riker and she looks really awkward and really bad acting on her part there, but it's really funny. When they crawl out of their mouths, it's a stop motion effect and it would have been better if, again, they weren't bright neon colors that look like gummies. Yeah, or if they had an animator who knew what they were doing. The other admiral runs out of the room, and Picard and Riker go after him, and there's a really awkward, pretty typical, I guess, for this show, shootout between them, where they're all shooting really slowly and, you know, dodging feet out of the way, and Riker looks back to see where the shot hid and stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense. I like that scene because it was just goofy. I thought that guy was in really good shape for being as old as he was. For the speed he's running, I also thought it was dumb how when they called out his name, he stopped and turned around to look at them. <laughs> Usually if you're running away from someone, you keep running. <laughs> so all the little bugs crawl into a room where Remick is sitting at this big chair looking at a star chart or something, and it crawls up his leg and it goes in his mouth, and then his neck is kind of pulsing, and that's a cool effect. I like that. Yeah, that's that's really cool. The shot when it crawls into his mouth is particularly bad because it's barely moving at all, and it, you can see that its legs are just sticking out to the sides, and it just looks like a big chunk of plastic. 
And when he closes his mouth after it's all the way in, he pretends to swallow, but you can tell there's still a gigantic fake bug in his mouth before the shot cuts away. And then he gives out that line. I like how he says it so aggressively. We seek peaceful coexistence. So they look at each other and then they just start shooting him. We get the awesomest shot out of this whole episode where his head just straight up explodes. You might be able to confirm this. I don't know if it's true, but in the UK, this whole episode was banned for being too graphic. Yeah, I think that was true. Yeah. Later aired in an edited form. I mean, it's a really cool shot. I do want to point out that right before his head explodes, you can see the puppet and his head is really, really small compared to the rest of his body. Yeah, so then his chest turns into the credits for the thing, where it's kind of burning away from behind. And this worm puppet thing, it's this, this the weirdest creature design that pops out. And then they shoot that, and it kind of dissolves away into nothing. It's really inconsistent on how the phasers work and what exactly they do to their targets. Also, the noise that that thing makes doesn't sound like an animal. It sounds like they told somebody on set, hey, can you make a weird sound? And they were like, Aah! and they're like, all right, that's good enough. And they're like, wait, don't you want to put that through some audio filters? And they're like, nah. And then the aftermath of all these really goofy looking gummy bugs just hanging all over the place. And the guy's torso all destroyed. It would have been cool if he exploded and bugs just flew everywhere, but that's not what happens. And why do they all die? That was something else um, that bothered me. Everything in this one was wrapped up. The neat little bow. All the bugs all died at the same time because they can't survive without the mother one. And we have no way of knowing how many there were or who was affected. The little ones didn't disintegrate. They're just dead. Which means everyone that has one still has one attached to their spinal column. It's just inactive. And they're pretty big. And they say there's no way to know who was affected. Well, all they have to do is go in for a medical scan and say you got a giant ass gummy worm on your spine. Well, even more than that, I would think now that these people don't have them anymore, they would say, hey, you know, something's up with my neck or, you know, my memories are screwed up from the past few weeks. I do like the very, very last part of the episode, though. The only information they have is they came from an unexplored section of the galaxy and Data detected a homing beacon coming from Earth. And it sets us up for a 1980s horror movie sequel of it's not over yet, but it is because they never explored again. But I think it works in this episode. It feels genuinely ominous, not just like a little throwaway gag at the end. This isn't one of those episodes where it feels like it doesn't matter. Conspiracy overall. We've complained about a lot of little things. There's a lot of goofy things in this episode. It is an episode of Star Trek, but it really works at achieving the kind of horror tone and the feeling of dread and the real sense that everybody's in danger and that everything that's happening really matters. It does a really good job with almost everything like that. I would give it an A-. minus. It's definitely one of my favorite episodes. It just is a little too goofy at times and some of the effects are not as good as they could have been, but it's really surprising that they did something like this, especially in the first season of The Next Generation. I really I really like this one. I think it's probably my favorite episode in the first season. I think surprising is a good term to use, especially because of the episodes that have come before and how put together this one feels. Yeah, some of the effects are a little lame. There's some goofy things in it, but overall, I think it works really well. I'm going to go all the way up to an A. 